Hello everybody! Today we're going to have a look at Atlas Corporation, ticker symbol ATCO. Not the Atlas Corporation from the Call of Duty Advanced Warfare video games that Kevin Spacey introduced us to, but a real business with the same name. And there goes half my audience. Goodbye! But that's not a big deal because it's only like two people. So that's not the end of confusion regarding this company. There's some more to come. C-SPAN, ticker symbol SSW, reorganized itself into a holding company called Atlas, ticker symbol ATCO, and then they acquired an energy company as well. So I bought shares of C-SPAN and ended up with shares of Atlas. So what is Atlas now? They're a global asset manager that owns and operates the businesses they invest in. So on the investor relations page, they talk about deploying capital across verticals and infrastructure verticals. And vertical is hardcore hip hop rap slang for niche. So that's all they mean when they say that. So they're saying that while their customer base is small, the people who use their services need their services. So without further ado, let's meet Atlas. Atlas's CEO, Bing Chen, and CFO, Ryan Corson, are familiar because they were the CEO and CFO of C-SPAN. And what does Atlas own exactly? They own C-SPAN, which manages and owns container ships. And they bought APR Energy for a cool 750 mil, which builds, owns, and operates mobile power plants. So Atlas has five key priorities that they focus on. Consistent operational excellence, creative customer partnerships, solid financial strength, quality growth opportunities, and disciplined capital allocation. So what is C-SPAN specifically, and what do they do? C-SPAN leases vessels to companies. So those companies don't actually have to buy the vessels themselves, and C-SPAN also manages and operates those ships. So they have 4,600 employees and 123 vessels. So one thing we need to understand when evaluating C-SPAN is the term TEU, because that's how production is gauged to some extent. So what does TEU stand for? It stands for a 20-foot equivalent unit. It's essentially one container on a ship. Look at the size of them ships, man. Whoa, that's the wrong picture. You're fired. So this is a 2500 TEU ship. That's a baby one. That's one of the smaller ships they have. You could fit four of those ships in this ship. And you could fit five and a quarter of those ships in this ship. 13,000 TEUs is a massive, massive ship, man. So this is a long-term industry. Container shipping is at the heart of international commerce. So C-SPAN operates ships for uh, Costco shipping, Maersk, CMA, Yang Ming, just to name a few. So even though this is a cyclical business to some degree, C-SPAN is able to bring some amount of stability to their income sheet by entering into long-term fixed rate charters. C-SPAN has increased their revenue guidance for 2020 from the $1.17 billion to $1.19 billion range to the $1.18 billion to $1.22 billion range. Their forward guidance is looking good. And all 123 vessels in their global fleet have secured charters. They've acquired four young 12,000 TEU container ships and have now surpassed the 1 million TEU mark. It's a lot of containers! Six charters have been extended from four to 10 years. So that's good, that's how they're getting that long-term stability in there. They have six ships with 10-year charters right there. Boom! Boom! So as far as container ship supply and demand go, it's, it's dwindling now in North America and in Europe. But it's picking up in China and it's supposed to pick up even more into 2021. I'm not sure if that's completely uh, 2020 crisis related. So now that we've had a little look at C-SPAN, what do they do? Let's have a quick peek at APR Energy and see what they're all about. One thing we need to understand when looking at APR Energy is megawatts and gigawatts. According to the Department of Energy, a gigawatt is the equivalent of 1.3 million horses. That's a lot of horses, man. Or 9,090 Nissan Leafs. Oh, the majesty. So APR Energy builds, owns, and operates scalable turnkey power plants. They can provide power in one to three months. 
This is something that would otherwise take like two years or more to set up. APR can also provide the short-term power solutions while they themselves install the long-term power solution. If you're into kind of nerdy stuff, this is pretty up there, man. Like watch this video, look at this stuff, man. It's going in the plane, man. It's going in the plane. Like, what are they doing? That's pretty cool, man. And then they just pull it out and drive it away. Look at that. It's crazy. So they can deliver these prefab power plants to countries when there's a disaster or when uh, an aging grid needs a boost or for military applications or if something's just really secluded. So they provided these solutions to countries like Libya, Oman, Cyprus, Puerto Rico, Australia, Japan, the US Navy. The list goes on, man. The list goes on. One example of their use is Puerto Rico, 2017, just after Hurricane Maria. The US Army Corps of Engineers and their contractor, Weston Solutions, hires APR Energy to install two gas turbines. And 17 days later, they're up and running. That's just an incredibly fast rate. APR Energy currently provides five gigawatts of power worldwide. So what is that in horses? That's 6.5 million horses. And they have another two gigawatts ready to be deployed. As for APR's 2020 first quarter report, first thing I'd bring up is Charles Ferry, who's the CEO of APR Energy, resigned. They've signed contracts with two companies in Mexico across three sites, uh, which are expected to come online in the second quarter of 2020. As far as APR Energy being acquired by Atlas, it sounds like it was a pretty good deal from what I can understand. Atlas paid for the deal by issuing stock somewhere just under the $10 range, which isn't bad considering now it's under the $7 range. However, it could have been better since like two months before that, it was up into $14. APR Energy's contribution to the first quarter of 2020 is pretty small. They only contributed about one month's earnings from the end of February to the end of March. Atlas beat last quarter's earnings even without APR Energy's net income contributing to the quarter. Although it did contribute to the quarter. So that was one of the questions I had. Did, did Atlas have a great quarter because they bought APR Energy and that bumped up their net income? And the answer to that is no. No, they had a great quarter anyway. So what I've said heretofore is fact. Indisputable fact. But now I'm going to talk a little bit about my own opinion on the whole situation. So if you don't want your delicate mind tampered with, just hit the like and subscribe button and walk away from the computer. But remember to leave the computer running because that's how YouTube knows that you like my video and watch it the whole way through. It's good for my analytics. And that's how I make them gains, man. So first off, the 2020 crisis got the whole market shook and Atlas is no exception. They started off the year at about 14 bucks a share, and now they're down under seven. Under seven, man, that's crazy. And you know who my favorite rapper is? It's 50 Cent, it's on the dollar. That's what their stock's going for right now, man. 50 cents on the dollar, man. So what does that mean? That means their assets are $4 billion and their market cap is $2 billion. So in the case of something like Carnival Cruise, if they wanted to liquidate all their assets, there's not a lot of people buying Carnival Cruise ships, right? Not a lot of cruise ship companies out there. I think there's only three major cruise ship companies. But with container ships, there's a big market for container ships. We need shipping containers. Those aren't going anywhere. Those aren't going anywhere unless the whole global economy is gone forever. And on top of that, Atlas just had a great quarter. And I can't guarantee that that will continue because of the Roni baloney or the 2020 crisis or whatever. But for now, they're having a, a really great quarter. Also, a company like Atlas has seen hard times before. Like This isn't their first time. This isn't their first rodeo. They went through 08, 09. They know, they know how to get through tough times. There's some companies out right now that have never seen a profitable quarter and have never seen a recession. And that's not C-SPAN. They know how to get by and get through these things. And with a company like Atlas, the employees are more apt to show up to work when they're making good money. They're gonna take precautions and they're gonna social distance, but they're gonna show up and they're gonna get stuff done as much as possible because they have families and they are making a decent amount of money. You're not gonna risk your life if you're making minimum wage. So contrast that 
with companies where you don't make a lot of money, the Starbucks and the McDonald's of the world? Are you gonna risk your life if you don't make a lot of money and you don't have a family? Probably not, I wouldn't. What about dividends? When, <clears throat> when Atlas was C-SPAN, they paid dividends for 14 years. Now this quarter, there's the 2020 crisis and tons of companies aren't paying dividends. Atlas is still paying a dividend. Now, granted, in the past, they've been uh, scaling back the size of their dividend, but that's because they're getting their company in gear. They are paying off debts and they're buying other companies and they're buying more ships. They're doing all the stuff that needs to be done rather than just giving that money out to the shareholder. So they're really, in my viewpoint, they're moving from being a, an aging company that's paying a big dividend to trying to go back to being a growth company. And that looks to me like where they're headed here with the, with the holding company and the restructuring and all that. I think they're going for growth again, which is good, good on them. I hope it really works out. And on the one hand, I don't like that C-SPAN and APR Energy aren't really related companies. But at the same time, that might be what helps Atlas get through the cyclical nature of the industry by having this other company that's not related to that industry. Sounds like that's a sign of things to come and that they want to expand through acquisitions and that's what the whole restructuring into Atlas is about. And the one thing that both companies do have in common is that they're both profitable. So I'm okay with that. So on the bad side of things, the transport sector could take years to come back. I don't, who knows, right? I can't tell you, I'm not a fortune teller. I can't tell you how long it's gonna take, but it could be a long time. So don't invest money that you're gonna need. Don't expect it to bounce back up to where it was right away. Could take a while, could take three years, who knows? A short-term outcome is pretty fun, but it's just not realistic all the time in the stock market, right? You gotta be ready to be in there for three to five years or maybe more, 10 years. Now that said, money flowed out of this stock within a matter of months. There's no barrier that prevents money from flowing back in. And this isn't a normal recession. At the same time, this is the worst economic calamity we've ever seen, as far as I know of. And it also just has no real underlining economic cause. Like everybody just stopped working. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying just because this is somewhat artificial that it'll be over quickly. It might not be, but we'll see. We'll see what the economy is like and how quickly it can recover. This is a great, you know, little scientific experiment. Honestly, overall, I don't care if the economy is going to be down for a long time or for a short time. What I care about is buying companies that are on sale. And this company is on sale. So the questions are, how long until we're back to work? How long until we get this economic ball rolling again? And how long will Atlas be this cheap? I think at the very least, you should put Atlas on um, some kind of a watch list. And if you think they're going to go cheaper, wait it out. But this looks pretty good to me. As always, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And don't forget what I told you.